Uh, good morning, everybody. Um, it's great to be back in Korea. This is the, the second STO Summit. Um, we were <clears throat> really happy and excited to be here a year, almost a year ago. Thank you to Flip and uh, Judy and the whole eDaily team um, for putting this together and the Korean Exchange. Uh, I'm here today uh, to talk about something, uh, well, to focus on a topic, I think, um, around security tokens, um, real-world asset tokens, I guess. We'll just call them STOs today. Uh, to really kind of share what we think is the value um, of security tokens, the industry that is exponentially much greater than fundraising. Um, a lot of the, the people who have moved into the space think it's just, just a way to raise money and that's the end of it. But there's multi-dimensional value that we want to share with you guys today. Um, and why we think that you know, this is the biggest opportunity uh, in finance that we've ever seen. Um, I'm the co-founder and CEO of two platforms. Uh, Investor X was uh, the very first company in Asia to focus on STOs back in 2017, 2018. We actually came to uh, the Korean uh, blockchain week uh, events in 2017. It was the very beginning of the concepts of STO. So we've been doing this the longest in Asia. The InvestX platform is licensed in Singapore. It has a broker dealer and exchange license for security tokens, and it offers a, a complete end-to-end -end issuance trading and custody model um, for anyone to launch a security token and for any investor to purchase one. We also run iXSwap, which is our sister platform. Our other co-founder, Aaron, will be speaking just after myself. iXSwap um, is a launch pad and a decentralized exchange for STOs. I'll let Aaron talk more about that. Um, the essential, uh, the original um, idea and value proposition was there was no liquidity solutions in the STO market. So, so we took the innovations of decentralized exchanges from the cryptocurrency industry and we purpose built it for the security token industry, which means it actually has licenses for securities and licenses for custody and cryptocurrency. So you can think of iXSwap as the Uniswap for security tokens. So I think why we're all here and, and why we're all excited, um, sorry about that quick formatting error, I'm not sure where that came from, it worked this morning. The addressable market on the STO space, uh, we believe is um, the size of the, the capital markets. Um, we essentially focus, and today, mainly talking about private markets, although we do see now the public market titans, like BlackRock, Franklin Templeton, tokenizing you know, public, publicly traded assets and, and public market assets. But we think the real opportunity um, is actually in the private markets, which is the trillions of dollars of assets that have been issued on pieces of paper that are not traded anywhere, that, um, that exist all around the world, including real estate and private equity and venture capital and startups. So essentially everything that's not publicly traded. The size of the private markets is so big uh, in, the, in the tens of trillions of dollars, the, the, the key figure probably to take away is that it's, it's somewhere between six and 10 times bigger than the public markets. And that is an enormous opportunity. And that's where we think the assets themselves can benefit the most from tokenization. Uh, there's a world of assets being tokenized, and what's really exciting is the development over time um, that we're seeing now of new types of investment products and new ways to create um, types of investments around a particular asset. This is actually uh, a graph that's put together by Citibank. Um, and essentially, when this was put out a couple of years ago, it said that you know, real estate's uh, probably a good, simple example. In, in a real estate project, you might have debt and equity, you, and, and obviously you might have different types of debt and equity in that asset. But now, as we move forward, you will see assets being tokenized all the way from financial rights to ownership rights, advertising rights on buildings, um, and, and a whole, um, much more to a granular level. So this will mean that there'll be a lot more investment products. And that's one of the most exciting parts about security tokens is not just tokenizing an existing asset, but doing that and making the actual investment products more interesting, more exciting, open to more people, and therefore it'll be, be, create more value. 
we started our businesses focused on private equity real estate, but realized many years ago that uh, tokenizing shares of companies is relevant for every industry. So we're now seeing an explosion around the world. Outside of Korea, the industry is now known as real world asset tokens, RWA. Um, there's a few other countries still using STO, but it's the same meaning. And so we're seeing now, um, as Bob just mentioned, uh, the concept of tokenized stocks. I think that's super interesting. When I first heard about it, I thought that's not, that, that's not such a great idea. I can buy stocks. I'm talking from a, um, you know, a, a Singapore-based fintech entrepreneur who can buy public stocks on five different platforms on my phone. That's certainly not the case if you are from Indonesia, Nigeria, uh, Philippines, etc. So there's, there's a super majority of the world's population that are not able to go to NASDAQ and buy stocks there and hopefully tokenize stocks through platforms like INX and ours and others opens up a whole new world of assets. That aside, we're seeing real estate, of course. Real estate is uh, one of the biggest assets in the world. We've seen the success of publicly listed REITs in terms of offering up um, high quality real estate that produces yield in a tradable format on a stock exchange has been an incredibly successful product. Now, if we bring that same concept to the rest of the real estate market around the world, it's gonna be very, very exciting. REITs, public listed real estate REITs are very, very uh, successful, but the problem is uh, you need huge money. Friends of mine in Singapore that do this, they won't do a REIT unless there's $500 million or more of assets. So, and there's only certain types of assets that you can put into these REITs. Um, you can't do development projects, you typically don't do sort of hospitality, hotels, all these kinds of things. So that's one other area where seeing companies tokenize their shares, uh, creating liquidity optionality for their shareholders and their, their team. That's a really great one. We tokenized our own ESOPs, our employee stock options. We put them in a token format so our own team can buy and sell and trade them because typically uh, employees in a startup who work for a lower salary to get shares in the company have, um, there's usually a binary exit. There's either no exit or the company sells in five, 10, 15, 20 years. So we're changing that value proposition. But other startups are launching on, on our platforms. And I think that's very exciting, interesting area as well because um, if you can sell equity in your startup to a much larger community, who can participate early, not just large venture capital firms, I think you'll have a much better product with much lo more loyal customers. And that's another really exciting area. We're seeing private equity. Um, I'll talk a bit more about that. And, you know, um, just it, it's, it's unlimited. Um, every, every single industry is coming in as commodities as, as well. So the STO ecosystem today is um, much bigger and greater than it's ever been. It's growing every day. Um, you have a whole bunch of platforms focusing on different types of assets. You have uh, STO protocols, which focus on one particular type of, of um, asset. You have infrastructure platforms like ourselves, um, broker dealers, exchanges, custodians with the technology where you can issue, trade and custodize STOs. Uh, there's amazing innovations, if we don't say so ourselves, like IXSwap where you can take your STO to IXSwap and you can start your own liquidity pool. You can take $5,000 of your shares, real estate, startup, pair it against 5,000 USDT, USDC, and you can start a liquidity pool for your asset. This has never been possible before in the history of the world with $10,000 of equity. So um, it's really, um, this year, a lot of people think that well, last year, this year, around the world, people think the STO market's really started. It actually started in 2017, 18. So there are companies that have been around for a very long time building um, through the challenges of uncertain regulation and the crazy cryptocurrency markets and the, the bear markets and the bull markets. But the industry itself is actually five, six years old now. And that's why we're seeing BlackRock and Franklin Templeton and all, you know, that's probably why we're in the Korean exchange today. Um, that's why the, the whole of Wall Street has, has, has now seen the value proposition. And just as importantly, at least for us, the whole cryptocurrency market has started to see the value proposition. Because one or two years ago, um, 12 to 24 months ago, uh, we had another 
in the midst of a bear market in the cryptocurrency market, we had hundreds of billions of dollars of cryptocurrency earning no yield. So people started tokenizing treasuries and money market funds that were paying these fantastic five or 6% returns, and they did that on chain. So they targeted the crypto hedge funds and the big cryptocurrency holders that were earning no yield because USDT and USDC uh, pay 0% zero, zero interest. And that was when the cryptocurrency market took on, uh, that's when the cryptocurrency market first really understood the value propositions of STOs. Um, and then they said, what's next? And then outside of Korea, they said, let's change the name of the industry from STO to RWA, <laughs> Real World Asset Token. So that's one of the reasons now where we have Wall Street coming for the space, and we also have all the big cryptocurrency groups like Coinbase and other cryptocurrency exchanges looking to launch Real World Asset Tokens and sell these STOs, sell them to their user base. Um, you know, essentially, um, most, most people consider stable coins as, as, as security tokens. Um, I think these are some of the biggest um, assets in the, in the cryptocurrency. It shows how important they are, right? And I think now we're going to see Tether and Circle, who are behind USDT and USDC, start to launch yield-bearing products, which are securities. Um, so we're now going to see this, this next wave of evolution. Uh, we can see, because this is on chain, and, and one of the key important parts about why the STO market is growing rapidly now is because everyone has, everyone from TradFi to, um, you know, the crypto industry has, is now realizing that you need to issue these securities on public chains. Um, I know a lot of regulators start initially thinking private chains are the way forward and you can protect this and that, um, but that's not the end game. All the digital assets in the world that we know about, that we consider digital assets, Bitcoin, NFTs, DAOs, stable coins, they're all on public chains and therefore they all interact with each other and that's the real value proposition. So if you go on and issue STOs on your own private chain, it's just your own private database. You haven't changed really anything. You haven't increased the community, you haven't increased the exposure, you haven't increased the use case. And that's why Larry Fink said in Q4 last year, it's all about issuing security tokens on public blockchains because of all the value and the connectivity to the digital asset ecosystem. And because it's now on chain, you can now see the real growth of this. Because a couple of years ago, if some bank said, I'm issuing security tokens on a private chain, no one could see it, all right? So that is the big evolution as well, is the real growth of appetite and execution of issuing security tokens on public blockchains. And that's something that we've been building towards. So this is BlackRock's um, Biddle Fund. That's doing very well. I think it's just over 500 million or so um, and growing. Um, we've got commodities. Uh, we've got gold. Um, and this is a project that we did in Singapore with the MAS, the Monetary Authority of Singapore. They gave us a fintech um, grant to tokenize the very first ever Singapore onshore fund vehicle called the Singapore Variable Capital Company. We did that with UBS, State Street, PwC, tokenized this on a private and public blockchain and wrote a white paper and shared this with the regulators. So Singapore government, extremely forward thinking. They wanna know how the technology works, what's the difference, what's the benefit, the pros and cons, and they're 100% um, supportive of issuing STOs on public chains. And I'm going to get more to, again, the reason why we talk so much about, about that. And I, I think I'm trying to influence the Korean market here to move to, the, to that space a little bit earlier than, than later as well. Um, but there'll be a world of private and public chains, that's for sure. So, so why are we kind of doing this? We're increasing transparency. These are the 101 benefits that everyone's thinking about today, right? Um, Digital is better than paper. Uh, we could trade these things. Um, there could be some more liquidity. There could be more people looking at it. That's, that's the, the, the thinking that we had five, six years ago. And it's still true today, but it's just one of the value propositions. So as I said, um, today I wanted to really talk more about what value is there in tokenization that is far beyond just raising money. Whether you launch a security, whether you launch a real estate project as a paper offering or a tokenized offering, you still have to raise money. It doesn't change that fact. Whether you do paper or token today, close that project, tomorrow you do a new project, still got to go raise the money. So there was this very large 
a, a big part of the world has been misunderstanding and had an incorrect assumption that you could just launch any security token and all these crazy crypto people would throw money at you because that's what they do for ICOs and cryptocurrencies. It was 100% wrong and it failed, right? Um, so what my point is, is that there's a lot more value behind doing uh, tokenizing your assets and this is what we're gonna talk about right now. So we just talked about the first part, digital versus paper. Um, what, what are the benefits of, of doing that? Emails better than you know snail mail, um, transparency, immutable cost savings. Now let's get into what is much more exciting and much deeper in terms of a value proposition. The second um, proposition that we'd like to talk about is connecting to the power of digital assets, decentralized finance, decentralized exchanges, automated market makers. So we built IX Swap as the first um, exchange. A decentralized exchange that anyone with an STO could come to that platform and they could start their own liquidity pool. So this is a whole new paradigm shift and I think one of the best, best innovations in the space um, so far. So if you go back to 2017 in the cryptocurrency markets, everyone in the world was trading cryptocurrency on centralized cryptocurrency exchanges. It's why Upbit, Binance, Coinbase became so big. No one traded on decentralized exchanges because there was no liquidity. Decentralized exchanges in 2017 was just like a website with a listing board, buy my one Bitcoin and hope someone comes and offers. At that point in time, it was the development of what is known as the AMM model, the automated market maker model for decentralized exchanges. And essentially, the most famous one today is Uniswap. Uniswap said, okay, if anyone wants to start a liquidity pool with a cryptocurrency, just bring it to our platform, bring your cryptocurrency, bring the other paired token, and you very quickly, very fast, very efficiently, you can start a liquidity pool, it can be very small, and you can grow from there. What that did was take um, the trading volume on decentralized exchanges from almost zero to trillions of dollars. More importantly, it gave 10,000 cryptocurrency altcoins um, a place to start liquidity. They, wouldn't, they didn't have the money, they weren't big enough, they weren't welcome on Coinbase, Binance, and Upbit. So tens of thousands of coins started launching liquidity pools on Uniswap, and then now it's become this huge success. So we wanted to build the same thing for security tokens. We believe there'll be infinitely more STOs than there will crypto because there's infinitely more securities in the world, as we pointed out a couple of slides ago. So where are all these STOs going to trade? Well, they all want trading. Some of them will be big enough to be on Investor X, be on INX. What about everybody else? 99.99% of STOs don't have the money. No one understands the product. It's too small. It's my startup. It's your real estate project. Where are they going to trade? We built IXSwap so they could come to IXSwap and start a liquidity pool with their STO in a legal compliant way. So we also have retail securities licenses and crypto and custody licenses so you can legally do a, a pool and a trade. So Uniswap and the decentralized crypto exchanges are not licensed to handle security tokens. What's next? You know, um, I think number three is going to be enormous. Um, lending, borrowing, and staking. So if you have a paper share of your startup, you can't do anything with it. If you have a tokenized share of a startup, you could lend on that, you could borrow on that, you might be able to stake it and earn some rewards. And we've seen the success of this in cryptocurrency as well, in decentralized finance. Up until, um, I'm not sure the dates, probably more 2017, 2018, when, when DeFi started happening. DeFi to me was, how do you implement services that make these cryptocurrency assets more interesting? Up until 2017, I think it was pure speculation. But then people came out with lending platforms and borrowing platforms and lending protocols. And as soon as you could do things with your cryptocurrency, they became more valuable. And, and lending, borrowing, staking is just services taken from Wall Street, right? And they plugged that into cryptocurrency and it made the cryptocurrency market much more valuable and it goes on today and it evolves and it's growing. Same thing for STOs. When, when people can take their super liquid shares of real estate funds, shares of companies they can't do anything with, sit on a piece of paper in the drawer on the shelf, waiting 10, 20 years to get an exit, and they can take them to platforms where they could lend and borrow on those assets because it's digital, it's tokenized, it's transparent. 
you open up a whole new world of value and you create multiple levels of extra value for those assets. Lending, borrowing, staking for STOs is just beginning. It's going to be very, very big. Very exciting uh, marketplace. Um, the next one I want to sort of focus on was, uh, again, uh, number four. I touched on this earlier in the, in the talk. With STOs, you have programmable securities. You have programmable equity, programmable debt. What does that mean? We're going to see a whole new world of innovative investment products. We've launched Venture Capital 2.0. What's that? Well, it's a new way to launch a venture capital fund as a STO. We do that. We set it up in a week. We can fund them in a couple of weeks, and then we create a liquidity pool immediately after that. So we've taken what typically was months and months of time in a huge amount of cost. We boiled that down into a week at a very low cost. And once it's funded, investors can trade. Typically, trying to get out of a venture capital fund takes 15 to 17 years. Our investors can now do it after one week. This is 100x better than a traditional venture capital fund. Another example, real estate, it's a similar thing. You tokenize a real estate fund instead of having to wait seven years to get an exit. There's a, there's a liquidity pool. You can trade in and out of that. Um, it also allows managers to not have a fixed, what typically is a fixed seven-year life cycle, because at least in the US commercial real estate, there's been a lot of real estate funds that have had um, horrible returns, because by the time it ends at the end of the seven year, the real estate market's in a, in a bear market and they're forced to sell. Um, because that was, that was the deal seven years ago when they launched it. As a tokenized version, they don't have the time constraint. So it's much better for man real estate managers. It's much better for real estate investors. As I said, we've tokenized our ESOPs. Our um, you know, team, people that join startups, they, they are excited, obviously. They sacrifice typically a lower salary to get shares in the company. Problem is those shares have value, but they usually only see it once, if they see it once, which is when the company sells. So having a tokenized ESOPs is much more valuable for the team. If you have tokenized ESOPs in your startup, that means your ESOPs are better than everyone else's ESOPs, which means people want to come work for you. So it's better. So new investment products, I think, is a really, really big thing. Um, and the other analogy I'd like to give is if you think about the cryptocurrency markets, we, we know through the use of tokens that we see the development of new investment products all the time. What does that mean? Well, we started with Bitcoin in 2008. In 2013, we had Ethereum. And then 2017, we had the, the ICO boom. And then since then, we've had the development of NFTs. That's a whole new asset class. It's not security tokens. We've had the development of DAOs. Some of them are, some of them aren't. Um, you know, basically crowdsource, community-owned and funded investment vehicles. We've had, obviously, stablecoin growth. We've now got a whole bunch we've had, and now we've got the STOs. Um, and then in the STO market, we're going to now start to see new types of debt, new types of equities, new ways to link assets together, breaking these assets down into granular levels. So we're going to see a whole new world of investment products. And the best way to think, the best example I have about why that is going to be a huge, huge opportunity, if you think back to the very, very first ETF that was launched, I think, in 1989, don't quote me the numbers. It was something like $6 million to raise. It was considered a failure. It probably cost them $10 million in legal fees. The very first ETF. So a new technology structure came to the public markets. And 30 years later, it's an $8 trillion in asset class. This is what STO is going to do to the private markets. We're bringing this new technology. We're marrying it to an existing marketplace that's enormous. And we're going to see this huge explosion of value and growth in value. So, so that's, that's really exciting. And then lastly, <clears throat> lastly, something that we've been building towards for five, six years. Um, we always believe that the biggest cryptocurrency decentralized finance platforms uh, would eventually want to sell STOs. Um, why? Because they can make money. And just like banks and financial institutions, once you build a very large user base, you find more things to sell to them. It's very simple. So in 2021, we actually had the very first cryptocurrency exchanges launching STOs. We had the infamous FTX. We had Binance, 
we had Bitfinex, they launched tokenized stocks. They just did it with no licenses. <laughs> so it was legal. So then they pulled them down, right? So that was for, let's call that phase one, or first phase. Second phase, now, Coinbase, building an STO exchange in Abu Dhabi. Um, we're having discussions with every major cryptocurrency exchange about helping them legally and compliantly originate and launch STOs to their user base because the cryptocurrency guys, exchanges, do not have securities licenses. And if you want to launch STOs, you need to have securities licenses. But the point is, all of the crypto markets, the crypto players, are coming for, um, for this asset class. Not just them, right? And now we're seeing this convergence. So we have Wall Street, Robin Hood, selling stocks, buying cryptocurrency exchanges, getting to the digital assets. And we have Coinbase, biggest cryptocurrency group, launching STO exchanges. So we now have Wall Street and we have DeFi, both converging on the STO market. That's what's really exciting. And you're never gonna sell an STO to anyone in the cryptocurrency industry if you issue it on your own private blockchain. That's just a, a disclaimer. <laughs> They're not interested in private chains. You've got to issue on the chains. They already have all the chains, the public chains, because they've got all the public, they've got all the, the tokens. So hopefully that added a lot of value and try to open up everyone's minds to things that are way beyond just launching to raise money. If you're just going to launch an STO, it's exactly the same as the paper version. There's no exciting elements to it. There's nothing more meaningful to it, don't do it, uh, it's not gonna work. You need to be thinking about all the other value propositions and how you're gonna position yourself as a leader in this new world and take advantage of this value. So just lastly, um, just a bit of a comparison to our platforms versus others. So the IDO platforms, ICO platforms, um, they launch cryptocurrency, uh, that's it, right? They don't do they don't do securities, they're not legally allowed, they don't do secondary trading. You now have these STO protocols, like Ondo and Maple Finance. They're essentially launching one type of product, um, which is fine, but most of them are only for accredited and sophisticated institutional investors only, not retail investors. Then you have the decentralized crypto exchanges, which are for everybody, but they're not, they don't have any STOs, RWAs, because they are not licensed to. And on our platforms, we've solved all of those problems because we spent five and a half years putting all the licenses together so people can buy and sell STOs as easy as buying and selling crypto, but it's legal, it's compliant, and there's basic KYC. Um, the chairman of Binance is, is one of our key advisors. We've got some great investors, Coinbase, UOB Bank Ventures, Spartan, and other leading investors, uh, both from Wall Street trad, traditional finance as well as DeFi. Uh, including a bunch of listed companies. Um, I'll be here for the rest of the day. Aaron, our co-founder, is here as well. I'd be happy to talk anything um, related to STOs, um, both in Korea. We've got some fantastic Korean clients. We're tokenizing Korean IP. Um, we've got a lot of exciting partnerships that are in existence and more to come. And you can sign up, at least on the iSpot platform there. Thank you very much. Have a nice day. <laughs>